A warm welcome to all our viewers, to our series Natural Medicine Today. Today it's about whether athletes really have the optimal supply of nutrients available and how we can even measure that and what important factors play a role in order to really be able to perform to the full. And Dr. Heinz Luscher will talk to me about it on the show. Stay tuned. Dear Heinz, it's great that you're back. And I'm very happy. Welcome. Glad to be back. We have already highlighted a number of topics. Bioidentical hormones. Then we spoke about irritable bowel syndrome and chronic diseases, vital substance topic. And now it's a bit about your experience with athletes that they are really left to their own devices with their vital substances. Somehow nobody cares about it. Yes, you have already summed it all up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Athletes are looked after fantastically in the area of training structure, sports medicine, injuries, that is done very well there. But when it comes to micronutrients, Switzerland is a developing country. Not just Switzerland, I see it in Germany too. But who is there, who actually has the expertise to deal with micronutrients? I got my knowledge from Professor Wernick in Germany. He has a huge database of thousands of top athletes that he has researched and he has seen that micronutrient supply is three to five times too low. And if you replace these micronutrients or take them as a dietary supplement, the body can produce more energy. That's the be-all and end-all for the athlete, to reach the performance limit. And if there is a lack of micronutrients, performance is very slightly reduced. Despite all the training. Well, his data inspired me and now I especially want to help athletes in this area at Wise Medicine. I don't interfere with the attending doctors in the clubs, the sport doctors there do the normal medical business there. But we can offer a supplement in this area, and it does not only affect the absolute top athletes, it affects all competitive athletes. There are people who work, they are managers, they are business people. They do Ironman and Marathon and that applies to them in exactly the same way. Professor Wernick's database shows, these people, managers, have exactly the same shortcomings as top athletes. Yes, of course, they are also under constant pressure, in that sense. How do you proceed when people really come to your practice? With the initial examination, what are the means by which the framework conditions are set? We need very broad laboratory investigations. We have three programs, bronze, silver, gold, and if I really want to look deep into what's missing, then we have to do the maximum. We measure the usual medical data that the family doctor would also take. But then there are these micronutrient measurements. We measure the minerals, the trace elements, the vitamins, the antioxidants, the fatty acids, the amino acids, and all of that is measured. I then also measure the hormones, salivary hormone test. I'm doing a panda test to find out how the gut works. How does a panda test work? It's about the irritable bowel. Platelets are measured twice in different reagents. And if there is a difference, then you can conclude that the intestines are not functioning optimally. And I do a dark field analysis. It's a broad, very, very broad clarification. Which nobody else offers in the sports sector. What exactly do you see in the dark field analysis? There are always discussions there. One says that far too much is being interpreted purely. The other says it's great. 
Why do you think the dark field method is a useful addition? It's just an addition. One cannot make a diagnosis from the dark field. If someone says, I see a liver problem, unfortunately there are naturopaths like that. That cannot be. It's just a hint. But what I see a lot right now is red blood cells sticking together. And then the oxygen transport capacity is simply limited. That's bad for a top athlete. They need every oxygen molecule. Yes, that is the Rouleau formation. Yes, you can see things like that. How do you get the Rouleau formation solved? I have a remedy for the gut called NeoVital. This improves the intestinal function relatively quickly and well, because the Rouleau formation has to do with hyperacidity and often with excess protein. Diet plays a role there and hyperacidity, but it also has to sow with these lipopolysaccharides that are getting into the body via leaky gut, they also play a role. And this is being improved, I saw it myself with me, I also had Rouleau formation, took NeoVital for a few days and did it again and it was gone. It's not always that quick, not always. Well, I assume your body is so well supplied with nutrients that your metabolism also reacts quickly. Yes, I'm stuffed up to here with micronutrients. <laughs> That's why I'm only 50, right? Biologically. Yes, sure. There was a process for you too. You used to be a family doctor and very machine-like, like you said before. You did not see man as a biological being, holistically, until you then started to deal with the micronutrients. How was your own experience? When did you start saying, now I'll see how it actually looks for myself? I've only been working in the field of biological medicine for 10 years. I didn't know that before, didn't believe it, but since. <laughs> I read it and practice it, of course I did it myself. Well, I take a lot of micronutrients because I'm retired, but I don't want others to see it. I really want to work for many more years. It's so joyful to see people thrive on micronutrients. Now that I slowly understood it, I don't want to have to stop now. But it's fascinating that so many doctors actually use this retirement phase then perhaps when they also have the time to do something else. I was once in Stuttgart in the library, no, in the bookshop and then I really see, I don't know, he was maybe 70, 80. And he had taken the books off the shelf which were also interesting for me at the time. Vitamin D and Logi method and all that. And then I approached him, said, excuse me, I have to ask, because you're just getting the books that also belong to my thesis. And then he says, yes, I've been a doctor and now I have time to deal with health. So better late than never. But that's what made it so visual. He just had time now to look. And then we really went for a coffee and I found it very exciting, because he said he didn't know that much. It is my heart's desire that this biological medicine gets a little more weight in conventional medicine. Mm. Conventional medicine isn't wrong, there's so much good. But there is one more step and I want to work together, that would be my wish. Also with the sports doctors, I would like to work with them. I can't make a training plan for a runner, I can't. How is the aerobic and aerobic threshold, where is it? That's what sports doctors do. But I can support these people's bodies so that the performance is fully available. They also break down the lactate in a completely different dynamic, they regenerate much faster, that's also the case. Yes, the regeneration time can be halved, I recommend aronia juice to athletes. That works incredibly fast. Aronia is a super good antioxidant. It consists of OPC and hundreds of other polyphenols. 
After a workout, after a competition, the free radicals are extremely high. And they break down quickly if you take antioxidants, after that. Such simple things that no one knows, but the athletes who do it, we have a few who attest to that. Their regeneration time has been significantly reduced. Now, of course, there are always critical opinions on the subject of constantly adding nutrients, and of what quality. What are the most important criteria for you, that athletes or when you take nutrients, should pay attention to? Quality is number one. There are unfortunately, in the field of dietary supplements, many bad products. They are also on the market and the layman can hardly tell them apart. It's really difficult. I work with King Nature Company and there some analyzes are made with other products and you can often see when laboratory analyzes are carried out that what is on the label is not in there. And I'm dependent on a manufacturer who I know, what's written on it is also in there. This is a crucial point for me. Good products. If you now do these athlete analyses, what are the extreme deficiencies, where you say that really knocks the bottom out of the barrel? It's not one, there are many. So vitamin D, practically all. I work with one athletic trainer in the absolute top range. He gives the athletes 10,000 units of vitamin D per day. In conventional medicine I would almost have to fear to keep the practice. But the athletes need that and if you measure that with them, they are not increased. They have an increased need, but this is not known in the broader sports world. Omega-3 is important, the whole trace elements, they are crucial. What do you take for an omega-3 source? There's all sorts of things, krill oil, fish capsules, algae preparations. Yes, you need a good fish oil that is free of heavy metals. There are only two or three companies that make it. So there it is important to pay attention to quality, high dosage of EPA and DH and no heavy metals in it. Yes, it always says 100% highly cleaned. You also asked about krill. Krill is a good source, but one krill capsule has much, much less omega-3 than fish oil. You can work with krill, but you have to then take 10 to 15 capsules and that's not a solution. It's also more expensive, so it makes less sense. It's good, good quality, but we need higher doses. So the most popular is Cristiano Ronaldo, someone here has probably already said that. He is known to have been taking 4 to 6 grams of omega-3 per day for the past 15 years. And he's never been seriously injured in his career. With this attitude he is an absolute top athlete to imitate. In this area, not in others. <laughs> And so I just want to fill up the athletes, fill up the whole body with the important micronutrients that they can keep their careers at the top level without injury. How do you deal with this whole amino acid protein issue? What did you learn about it or do you measure that? Do they get their amino acids or any maps? We do an aminogram, that's the name, you measure these 20 amino acids, I see immediately where is too much, where is too little and what is too little is replaced. It's not that difficult. At what rhythm do you do the analyses? You have to look, you fill up then, is it then overfilled, or filled up? The first analysis is crucial, that's where the athlete sees, my goodness, I didn't know that at all, nobody has ever said that to me, I'll do it. And then it depends on the athletes themselves whether they say I want to do it a year later, let them check where I stand, or whether they say, now I know what I need, I'll just take that for the next few years. That is up to the athletes themselves.
Do you have the experience that sometimes a kind of intuition sets in, that the body is also has the ability to learn what's in which capsule, where the need is? I once experienced this with vitamin D, when I had filled up properly, that the body has a memory like that, hey, if we have the value, we have that state and when we leave it, unconsciously we know our, it's about time again. Yes, that is an exciting phenomenon. We also call this craving. That people crave a particular food or supplement without knowing what's in it or what their deficiencies are. I can't explain that. But I see that often. For pregnant women. Why does a pregnant woman suddenly crave pickles? There is no explanation, but it is actually demonstrable that in the very food that she feels like eating, there are these things that the body needs right now. This is the craving phenomenon. There is still much that has not been explored. Back then, my lectures were always called culinary body intelligence, because I think, the more clearly we eat, the more we can fall back on it. What I would also find exciting would be this whole magnesium issue. Where do we have the qualitative differences, with which magnesium do you work in the patients? There are many different ones. Yes, there are probably about 20 different magnesium salts. The well-known is the citrate, but if you take too much of it, then you get diarrhea. But it is very fast in absorbing. In the case of citrate, magnesium is available most quickly. Athletes all need magnesium, everyone. Do you also work with the bisglycinate? No, well in the end I try to avoid just citrate because it is also an iron robber. If you take too much magnesium citrate you often have an iron deficiency problem. I use a product with four different magnesium salts which have different bioavailabilities. So I have a constant level, more or less, or at least not like that, but approximately balanced and that also causes practically no diarrhea. Great. I myself take 700 milligrams a day, an athlete needs more. And all these B vitamins, which are somehow, I don't know, they are stolen from us or our bodily senses can no longer absorb them because of the intestinal issues. How do you see the whole thing, especially B12? Yes, very important for blood formation and other functions. B vitamins, there is the B complex as a product. I work here with a total polyvitamin mineral product, where everything is in it, the B vitamins in 200 to 300 percent of the daily requirement, I have everything in one product. That's called Vitality Shot, that's my favorite there. I also have A and E and a bit of D in there and lots of minerals as well. To take this individually, you would have to take 50 products, that's impossible. You have to try to pack as much as possible into one thing, which then supplies the body with as much as possible. Yes, you really have to see that we are also talking about athletes here. They simply have an unbelievable consumption and without a dietary supplement they can't manage it. But afterwards it's really about the art to see what has priority. Uh -huh. And what is compatible with each other and how is the receptiveness? That's the way it is, high quality products for the athletes, and it doesn't work without nutritional supplements. This is proven in the large database. What we have to look at is the doping list, so there must be nothing that puts an athlete in danger. The main products I use are all on the Cologne list, so this is a list that is allowed in elite sport. Mm -hmm. 
The athlete must have the guarantee that they will not be caught. Quite interesting. If you really are an athlete and say you really want to deal with the subject even more intensively, is there a way to read about it or get in touch? I don't have any recommendations for that. So maybe Professor Wernick's books, everything is really explained there. So that's also my source where I learned it. Athletes are welcome, we do the analysis at Wise Medicine. Do you have a homepage or a website? On the website there is a section for sports, wisemed.ch, there is some information. Okay, great. Then I thank you, dear Heinz, I wish you every success in your retirement with the top athletes, super nice. I will then retire together with my young employees. Very nice. Then you really did everything right. Excellent. Then I thank you for coming and I hope to see you again soon. Dear viewers, that's a nice aim, to retire with the young employees. And all the nicer to recognize what really supports a good supply of vital substances with people. And thank you for watching. Wonderful time and see you soon. Bye.